Welcome back. It's Inside the Huddle and Maple Grove Voice. And boy, oh boy, high school season is in full swing. Football week one. Maple Grove travels to Osseo. Big rivalry game. Got a chance to catch up with head football coach of the Maple Grove Crimson, Matt Lombardi, following his team's scrimmage on Saturday, four-team scrimmage. Actually, both programs were uh, scrimmaging on Saturday. The Osseo boys program went down to YZ, and Maple Grove hosted for, uh, for yet another year their annual scrimmage. And uh, we caught up with head coach Matt Lombardi following their scrimmage on Saturday. So first two weeks um, in the books, kind of thoughts as you kind of hit yeah, now you shift gears in a game week, but let's kind of back up in the first two weeks of, uh, of camp. How'd it go? Um, you know what? I think we're coming along. We're a definite work in progress team, um, and it goes beyond the football field. I think um, it just the, it's it's fun when you have a team that's brand new and they're learning things, and they got to learn just those little things that matter. And so. Um, Football is what makes football great. It's so much beyond just the X's and the O's. And so it, I love this team. They're a team that I think is going to grow throughout the year, but it, it's hopefully they're starting to become men a little bit. What um, what what has kind of stuck out? I mean, I know, you know, you, not a lot of returners back. You get the best running back in the state back. Obviously that helps. Right. But you, you got guys that you're trying to bring along. Is, is that it, it, like you talked about, I mean, is it kind of a, hey, we got this moldable piece of clay that we can kind of do what we want with it? Yeah, I think so. And like I said, and it goes beyond the, like I said, you got kids that when they're young, it's, uh, it's 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 just funny as you get more mature you have to make decisions that sometimes are uncomfortable or inconvenient and things like that but it's for the right reasons and like I said they have to learn those things so Evan's a great leader he's he's someone as a running back that came back that kids can follow in good ways but like I said our hope is when our kids are in the classroom when they're outside the classroom when they're doing things they believe in themselves to make those good decisions and then football will will obviously follow but that's that's what makes football so great it does it patterns itself to life so well and these kids are learning that and that's what's been really fun about this year the uh the first two weeks are kind of hard because you're going you're seeing the same guys you're seeing yourself over and over and then you get to the saturday and, and you get a chance to kind of bang around with the, the other three teams that come in what you learn today about your team i think they learned um they're okay they got to keep battling it and i think um, obviously stillwater lakeville north and Tatino are great opponents that are very reputable and have had great uh past successes and lakeville north is a top two team in the state this year and so um it was it's fun for our kids to go compete against them because it, it shows them first of all they can but secondly what it takes to stay maintain at that level and i think that 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 was a great lesson so scrimmages like this are invaluable because it puts them in spots they have to grow up so now we got game week um, and, you know, school's not in yet, so it's not that normal routine of up and into class by 7.30 and, and right. bell and that whole thing. But you get osseo, so you got to go across town and, and, and play over there in the first one. And that's kind of a fun thing, you yeah. know, get that rivalry one uh, right out of the way. What do you expect? I mean, what's this week kind of look like? Well, it's, and it's a teacher workshop week, so everything's a little bit later. But but I think it's I think it's a great time to play Osseo. I think it's um, it's a good time to put the rivalry because it kind of brings kids back. They want to see the game. I think um, it, that first week's always tough because people are still out at their cabins cleaning up and doing things like that. So I think having it be the Osseo Maple Grove thing is a great. Um, not that you need inspiration for the opener, but I think for the community it brings people out. So it's always fun to play that first game because you usually see bigger crowds and things like that. And obviously. Uh, I really respect what uh, Coach Stockhouse is doing over there, and, and, and um, he's really trying to change things around, and he's doing a good job, and just hearing him on the news and things he's doing, they're going to come in ready because he's doing some good things. When you uh, when you have a chance to kind of look at, you've set the expectations so high for this program. I mean, you've, you've, you've gone to the state tournament the last five, yeah. and, and, you know, so that's kind of, the bar's here. So... How do you how do you get these guys as you go now and realize that it's this thing's a marathon and you said it it's a long season to kind of believe and just to buy in and to believe in each other and just to kind of to bring each other up right and I think our hopefully our regular season does that I think um, we put them in such a schedule that um, I'm a coach that's a little bit different I don't worry about padding records or anything. I, I I like. I like the lows as much as the highs. That's weird, but you just seems like that's where growth comes from. So if you put them in spots where they get exposed and things get capitalized, then it makes you so much better as you come. And I think that's been part of success in our playoff runs. I think when 
week two through six, you play the number one through four team in the state, which we are. The, the preseason rankings came out, and it's Minnetonka, Prior Lake, uh, Eden Prairie, and, and Lakeville North, and those are our four opponents. That only makes you better. I, I think um, that's that's been that's where I think our postseason successes come from is our kids aren't afraid of taking a challenge and, and, and learning from it. And then when we get to the playoffs, we think we're ready. What do you final one for you? What do you hope to to get out of Thursday night? Because uh, obviously, I mean, besides the win, that's the obvious one. But what, like, what do you want to see from your guys? You know, I, the wins obviously you always want to win that opener. It's good, better be one and zero than zero and one. But I think um, just kind of how they carry their bodies when things go wrong. I, I think that that the good teams when a play goes wrong, they look like they're fine, they move on. The teams that um, when something goes wrong and their shoulders slump and their heads go down, that that affects way more than just one play. And so, and that's kind of life too. So I, I think what I love about the first game is actually to see how they react to miscues and when because for some of these kids, it's the first time they're in front of a big crowd on a Friday night when you make that first mistake it feels like the world is is ended and it really hasn't but but for them it feels like that and see who's resilient enough to get through it play the next play and move to the next thing so that first game that's what that always tells me I think the second game you get better as players more than any game because you see a complete game you get film and that stuff but the first game shows you who kind of has the foundation the mental toughness to make an impact throughout the year Thanks to head coach Matt Lombardi for joining us here on the podcast. When we come back on the other side of this message from Twin Cities Orthopedics, we catch up with Ryan Stockhouse, the third-year head coach of the Osseo Orioles. This is Inside the Huddle on Maple Grove Voice. It takes a lot to bring down a Minnesota Vikings player, but when an injury occurs, a Twin Cities orthopedics physician is on the field and ready to assess the situation. TCO is the official sports medicine provider of the Minnesota Vikings and proud to be a part of the new home of the Minnesota Vikings in Egan. Best yet, the community can see the same great doctors at one of our 40 clinic locations across the metro. Visit TCOMN.com to learn more. TCOMN.com. Welcome back to the podcast. It's Inside the Huddle on Maple Grove Voice here with head coach of the Yasio Boys football team, uh, Ryan Stockhouse. You had to play at home for the first time in a, in a season opener in your uh, in your high school coaching career. How does that make you feel? It, it feels good. Um, you know, it with a with a crosstown rivalry game and going over there two years in a row and just kind of know you're going to have the community at your back and the guys are going to feel comfortable. Just the regular home routine is, is nice. I mean, not having to take that bus and um, having a little extra time here. So, uh, you know, we're excited. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a great matchup for us this year. I think we're going to see a lot of new faces on both both sides of the ball uh, for us and for them. Um, and obviously, you know, you know, got to take shut down Evan Hall. You know what I mean? So we've got a tough test in front of us. But having that home field advantage, having that kind of 12th man advantage, uh, I'd like to see what that looks like uh, this year. It's kind of fun. Um, we'll, we'll get there to the game. Uh, in a little bit. Camp, how's it going? First two weeks? It's been great. We've had a really good camp. Um, you know, it really started in the off season. Uh, there's coming into year three, there's just been a different feel. You know, we talk a lot about culture and building culture and, and what that means and how that means everything to us. It's it's how we prepare. It's how we respond to adversity. It's how we, you know, work when no one's looking. I mean, it's it's what we want to be known for, and uh, these boys have really worked hard at building that culture. So what we saw in camp was really a byproduct of all that hard work throughout the summer and the dedication in the spring. I mean, we're talking, you know, 6 a.m. workouts on the turf. We're talking winter passing league, you know, guys in the weight room or multi-sport athletes that are just keeping themselves in it. So, you know, for us, heading into year three, this summer we felt like we had a very efficient and very good summer, and I feel, you know, our coaching staff, we've talked about it a lot, just how quick – and how easy it seemed to go this year. And I feel like that's just because there's so much more. Our players are more in the known. Philosophies and expectations are out there on the table. So it was just getting to work right away, uh, pulling everybody together and spending some time gelling as a unit. And, you know, today I had one of our captain's offensive line came in and just said, he said, and I quote, you know, we're really gelling well right now, coach. And I feel like right now after two full weeks in our scrimmage, heading into game week, I, I think our team is gelling, you know. Um, they're able to understand how to hold each other accountable. They get on each other a little bit, but they don't get too down, um, which every team needs. we right. got to have leaders that step up and, uh, and, and, and push guys to, to work hard. So, Year one, head spinning. Yep. Uh, year two, slows down a little bit. You kind of get things a little bit more in focus. Year three is what? Year three, I think it's just about feeling good with what we're trying to do and, and, and getting ahead of the curve because of that. You know, you know year one was really – 
there was just so much going on, so much new, so much blending of staff, so much, you know, uh, living up to expectations from the year before. And year two is really about establishing this is who we are and this is what we want to do. And I feel like year three is really about just actually putting in motion the execution of it all. Um, like I said, players know the expectations. They know the coaches. The coaches know each other well. I mean, we're gelling well as a coaching staff. So um, it's just it's about executing. It's about hitting the ground running, and I think we've done that so far. And, you know, getting ready for our first test, and, and that happens to be Maple Grove this year. What, um, who stood out first two weeks in camp? Maybe give a couple names. Who, uh, who do you has, has popped? Well, you know, um, you look at all three of our captains right now. Um, Reggie Dupree, a returning running back for us, um, was really our rock last year. Um, Zach Foshing is going to be a starting left tackle for us this year, and we needed him to kind of turn into a guy, and he really has done that so far. Um, and then Eli Barlow, um, you know, you talk about a complete package, somebody who's involved in tons of things that works hard, weight room guy, lead by example. I mean, that's all three of those guys. Um, they do things the right way. Uh, a few other names for us, though, you know, Chris Royston, a returning three-year starter, that we have really seen him turn the corner as a player um, and as somebody who's he's investing himself into the offensive line and the team, and they're doing it back, and we're seeing him play with just a little extra spark, um, which is great. Um, and, and he's really anchoring the offensive line for us, and he'll help us out defensively. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, Joe Chia, who's been a tight end for us, now is playing some defensive end, and he looks really good there. Um, Connor Wayne as a leader, as a Mike backer, um, you know, really stepping up. And then Grant Tyus, um, giving us a feel that we haven't really had at safety the past two years. We've had more of a center field coverage type guy. We really haven't had a guy that, that wants to get involved in the box and wants to come up and make plays. And, uh, and he may be a little crazy, but that's in a good way football-wise. Um, so those are kind of some of the pieces uh, that step out. Uh, we feel good about our defensive back. Stephen Arell is going to be a junior starter for us. Uh, a good height, good aggressiveness on that side. Um, and, you know, the, but the one thing I think we're seeing is guys that are stepping up are just kind of stepping right into the roles and really, really playing well as a team together. Uh, let's spin it forward uh, to Thursday night. What do you expect from Maple Grove? Well, we expect a heavy dose of Evan Hall. Um, we expect them to be very good um, up front on offensive line. We expect them to be disciplined. Um, you know, um, when you walk into a game with a starting sophomore quarterback, you, you're probably going to want to look at some play action and some some confidence building throws and give the ball to your best player. Um, and so we really feel I, I don't think they're going to hide a whole lot. I think that's kind of you know they got one of the best running backs in the state, if not the best. I mean, if I were them, I'd be giving him the ball right. 20, 30 times a game as well. So. You know, game plan going in is we got to shut Evan Hall down. we got to be very sound uh, defensively. We can't miss tackles. We need to put 11 hats on him every single play uh, and really put the pressure on, on their sophomore quarterback to, to come out and throw the ball and beat us. Um, and, you know, um, defensively we know, um, you know, Lombo runs a great defense, a very aggressive defense. They're going to bring pressure. They're going to blitz. They're going to get in our face. Um, and we've got to be able to handle that. Um, so, um, you know, it's, I don't think there's a whole lot of secrets between the two. I think we kind of know what we're going to see. Um, I really believe it's going to be about heart, about uh, effort, and just about execution. You know, the team that doesn't put the ball on the ground, the team that, that plays to the last whistle, I think is going to be the team that wins Thursday night. Big thanks to Ryan Stockhouse for joining us and Matt Lombardi earlier on in the show. It's going to be a great game on Thursday night, 7 o'clock kickoff at Osseo's John Hansen Stadium. It's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside the Huddle. We'll see you next time here on Maple Grove Voice.